So, what's very useful is to know where we are now in May 2014 um, with respect to how the UK economy is doing. Um, for your example, it's very useful to know how the economy has been, the key trends, um, what's happening at the moment, and where we're likely to be in the future. Um, so, looking at the UK economy, um, we focus on many macro questions, and what you really need to bear in mind is we've had the nice years, years of continual expansion with low inflation until 2008. I and mean, then in 2008, everything went seriously wrong, and we had the Great Recession. Um, in the UK, output fell by a massive minus 7.2% in 2008 to 2009. Um, and the Great Recession in the UK, after the credit crunch, was the longest uh, that has been since the 19th century. Um, the USA, for example, had a much lower foreign output, only about 4%, 4.3%, I think. Um, now, why the Great Recession, and why has it continued um, till the summer of 2014? And the reason is possibly it's been exacerbated by fiscal austerity. So there have been tax increases, the main one has increased VAT in the UK from 17.5% to 20% in 2010. And there have been significant cuts in government expenditure, um, huge numbers of civil servants and public sector workers that have um, lost their jobs. Okay. Um, there's been the Eurozone crisis, this is perhaps the main factor, although Keynesians might emphasise the, uh, the deflationary effect of fiscal austerity. Another problem is our main exporter is the Eurozone. Countries um, such as France and Germany and the Netherlands, well, we've had this huge Eurozone crisis where there's been next to no growth uh, and often negative growth in Eurozone countries, our main export partners. And then there's been the problem that simultaneously of cost push inflation. Inflation rose to a peak of 5.2% in 2011. Um, so this explains the, exact, the, the, the long recession that's been, particularly in the UK, where people did at one point talk about a double dip and the potential for a triple dip recession. And people in 2010, 2011 were fearful with the potential of the collapse of the Eurozone that we might have a long, very long deflation, rather than like the Japanese economy has experienced for well over a decade. Well, fortunately, this seems not to be the case. So, um, what we need to bear in mind is currently we still have spare capacity in the economy, estimated to be minus 1.1 to 1.5% of GDP. That's a key point in your exam answers. At the moment, the spare capacity in the economy, we can afford for aggregate demand to increase further without necessarily uh, experiencing the build-up of inflationary pressures. Now, Remember that GDP has taken seven years to get back to the pre-crisis level. So here we are growing, and then we dip down in the crisis, and then back up again. Well, it's taken seven years to get back to where we were, okay? A long time. Just have a quick drink of chamomile tea to remain calm, despite all this adversity. So, um, key aspect is standard of living is measured by GDP per capita. It's going to take 10 years. The OBR predict by 2018 to recover back to where it was in 2008. This is, of course, because there's been a population increase. Those of you who are pretty sharp will wonder about that. Now, let's look at um, the uh, key issues in the UK economy. You need to know, of course, when you're answering a question and you have data, is there a negative or positive uh, output gap? The difference between actual output and potential output. And clearly in the UK, as we point out here, currently there's a negative output gap, but it's fairly significant. Um, when you're looking at policies, um, examining the economy, we're actually talking about the demand side uh, and the supply side of the economy. We'll come back to that. And a key issue, um, it's been in the news repeatedly for several years, is this concept of rebalancing. Do we want less consumption and perhaps more saving? Because at the moment the economy is recovering, but it's a consumer-led recovery. Okay, we'll come back to that. Investment is uh, beginning to recover, uh, but we perhaps in the UK lack investment, uh, and so we want to rebalance it. Well, there's more investment, more saving, less consumption, fewer imports, and certainly more exports. 
Uh, and that maybe we need to boost the manufacturing sector as opposed to the service sector. And maybe we need to rely less on financial services, which are a great export term from the City of London, um, which partly explains this huge uh, fall in GDP. So, what's the good news about the UK economy? Well, 2014 we're predicted to grow by 3% a year. That's, that's a really good, steady growth rate, neither too fast nor too slow. What I like to call a Goldilocks recovery. Um, so, if it's too fast, of course, it could. Uh, result in inflation. Now why is the economy growing so well now? Um, it's growing faster than any other rich Western country. The reason for that, number one, cheap money. We've had record low interest rates now for five years. In the rate of interest, the bank rate set by the Bank of England has been 0.5% for five, just over five years, speaking in 2014. And quantitative easing of $375 billion has been a, a sudden injection of liquidity in, um, and uh, printed, well, not, it's not printing the money, of course, but it's an electronic money into the monetary system. So, mortgage lending, for example, over the last year has increased by 25%. Um, real earnings are now actually growing. So, just the last month or two, real earnings started increasing. Nominal wages, money wages, have gone up 1.9%, okay. uh, whilst the rate of inflation is 1.6%. Number three, the Eurozone prospects have, are, are, are positive, and there's a, a growth in business confidence, and financial markets are more confident that the Eurozone will survive and has been rescued, although it's not out of the woods yet. Um, the key thing, as I referred to, CPI inflation is only 1.6% now, and that helps boost the standard of living at last, having fallen. Um, a long way since 2008. And so CPI inflation is going to be on target, according to most forecasts, over the next two or three years, at 2%. Remember, that's a symmetrical target. And another interesting thing is the pound fell after 2010, um, after the uh, beginning of the Great Recession, and obviously that meant cheaper exports. And that should have helped our current account of balance of payments. However, we still have a large structural deficit worth mentioning and of some concern. Um, the um, pound has recently appreciated by 10% on the trade weighted index. So, um, now, what are the advantages of this? Well, they're cheaper imports, that should help the standard of living and should keep, um, in, because it will keep the rate of inflation down. And so they won't be cost push inflation as a result of rising import prices, or at least it's less likely. Um, but, of course, it means it has a slight deflationary effect on the economy. Perhaps the interest rates will remain at a low rate of 0.5% for longer. I tend to think that interest rates will remain at 0.5% until, I suppose, the spring of 2015. Should be interesting, a general election occurring then. I think that Mark Carney is pretty dovish and quite Keynesian, and he doesn't think we're entirely out of the woods yet. What he wants is the economy to, to, to make a further and fuller recovery. Um, Employment has been increasing by 1 million a year, which is remarkable for the amount of job creation in the private sector. Uh, unemployment has fallen to 6.8%, um, which is great news, but there's still cyclical unemployment there, as well as structural uh, friction on angry wage unemployment, of course. Um, but we have a problem. There's a lot of under underemployment. A lot of people work part-time and like to work full-time. Also, a lot of people are classified as a self-employed, or if you're really self-employed, do we want to get a job in the, in the labour market? So, so, so those are some problems there. Productivity is a serious problem. It's close to 0% at the moment, and it has been negative. In other words, output per person has actually been falling. Whereas in the UK economy, it will generally be about 2 or 2.5% in the next years. Now, why is this? Is it because employers are hoarding labour, they have more labour than they need? Because of spare capacity. Well, I think that argument has a lot of present credibility. Other people argue that we've lost the um, product, some of our economy that is productive, called hysteresis, and therefore productivity falling is, is, a, is a more serious problem, it probably won't increase. Um, many think there is aggregate demand picks up, but the less spare capacity of productivity should improve. Now, the, uh, the key issue is house prices. House prices are risen in the UK by 10% on average. Um, is it a boom? 
and, and certainly more particularly as a bubble in London, where we are now, drinking our chamomile tea, um, house prices have increased by 18 percent over the last year. And this is potentially very serious because what it could lead to is a positive net wealth effect, increased consumption, and uh, potential for inflation, meaning that the Bank of England would need to more hastily increase the interest rates to get rid of this bubble. Uh, the Bank of England argue that they can use the Financial Policy Committee to tighten up mortgages in terms uh, of, of the, the generosity of the loans that banks make based on um, ratios of income to uh, mortgage, for example. Um, it's worth bearing in mind, therefore, that the UK has had a huge demand-side shock here for the Great Recession, and then a further supply-side shock with the cost of inflation. So really, it's, it's taken us eight years to recover. Okay. Um, so we've got this problem with house prices, as I say, um, and if we were going to be critical, we'd say there's the danger of house prices booming, resulting in consumer net growth, more borrowing, a positive net wealth effect, and the need to restrain demand again. On the, on the, on, on, uh, so that's worth considering. On fiscal policy, remember there's been a few key reforms. Uh, this government is really supply side minded. And in terms of fiscal policy, the supply side type fiscal policies are the top rate of tax is reduced from 50 to 45%. Um, now, this is highly controversial. Gordon Brown increases only for about a year at the end of his reign. I was going to say reign, maybe I shouldn't say that. Um, but um, will this increase incentives? Well, you need to debate and discuss that in, in, in the exam. Tax allowances is a big lived end policy for those on low earnings. Um, you don't pay income tax until you earn over 10,000. And corporations, so you need to assess that. That increases the benefit replacement ratio and therefore should reduce unemployment. Um, corporation tax is going to be 20% by April 2015. This is relatively low compared to many European countries, particularly France. So this will encourage, in theory, to an extent, corporations to locate their headquarters in the UK and encourage foreign direct investment. It'll encourage more investment and therefore maybe a successful supply side policy. But you need to assess that. And of course, there's a loss of tax revenue by reducing the rate. Budget deficit then is going to be zero by 2017 2018. In other words, the national debt, don't get them mixed up, the total accumulated borrowing is still increasing um, until 2018, even though the budget deficit is gradually coming down, of course. Um, it was projected to reach zero by 2015, um, however, this, the, the government's plans have been blown off course because of the sluggish nature of economic growth over the first few years of the coalition government. Um, so the key thing is national debt is still rising, and if you look, like, look, look it up, it's rising by thousands of pounds every minute. Uh, that's risen considerably during this video, I can show you. Anyhow, it's 1.23, and we've still got that problem, and it will only gradually come down after 2018. Um, so, th these are the key trends, and it's likely that we'll have stable economic growth, falling unemployment, and low inflation for the next few years. And then eventually, standard living after 2018 will begin to recover. I hope that's useful, and very good luck if you've got exams. All the best.